I think I did. That might not be the first time I've opened that. Maybe that's why there's nothing in it. Okay, we have one more initiative to find out about. I haven't found a camera yet. <clears throat> I don't know where I'm going to be able to find one. We have to find out about red bipedry meat. Or maybe it's just bipedry meat in general. Where's that speaker? Here he is. I need Grumpos to do this. So I'm going to go get Grumpos and I'm going to rejoin the uh, action after that. All right, here we are. <coughs> Took me about five minutes or so to get all the way back to the ship and get Grumpos back. So here he is. He's going to yammer this guy. Get the answer out of him. Grumpos is so good at yammering. Here he is. I hate to interrupt, but my two cents are worth as much as yours. And maybe even a penny more. Do you see me standing on a soapbox spouting my why and wherefores? I just want a moment to tell a little story from my yesteryears. And I ain't spinning no tale or weaving no yarn here. It's pure truth. Long years ago, there was a time I owned a bipedry. I'd left the military for a soul-searching quest to find myself. I spent an Indian summer building a cabin in the Cordican backwoods. I was complete with a chicken coop and a domestic bi bippy for companionship. It sang while I worked. I remember that fall fondly. In my youthful optimism, I named him Alejandro, after the Hispanic singer. And even though he was dumb as a plum tool, plum bob, I had to love him that the poor thing was a castrato. You see... Bipedry breeders cut off their tiny wizard mabobs before they reach pubertus so that they retain their soprano voices. How could I not feel for him? Well, two weeks into winter and everything turned south on a dime. A Hannigan fox broke into the chicken coop and enjoyed a five-hour course fate. Is that feet or fit? I don't know. The same week, a water pipe sprang a leak over my winter rations. I was getting hungry and Alejandro was getting nervous. He stopped singing altogether in order to be less conspicuous, but it didn't help. I hadn't eaten in two days, and there was a Gorion opera acting up in my stomach. My options were quickly disappearing. It was with a heavy heart that I approached his cage. Alejandro looked up at me with those huge, weepy eyes. Then he saw the gutting knife in my hand. I just still remember the look on his face. Bipedry meat ain't tender, my friend. I was a strong arm in my youth, <clears throat> and Alejandro made for an uphill cut job. His limbs were especially fibrous. You get your knife caught in a blood hose and you're looking at some soaked meat. Took me half an hour just to cut around his vein cavity and such. Point is, you're talking to the wrong man if you're looking for sympathy when it comes to eating the farm. Making laws ain't going to stop a starving man from killing a walking ball of meat, son. Frankly, if they're slaughtered the same way cattle are, I don't see the problem. So go stuff it up your goose pipe. Shock. Cold-hearted people such as yourself are the reason the High Council will vote yes on Proposition 6. We've heard your voice. We know your opinion. Please excuse yourself. Okay, we've got all of our answers. So poor Grumpos, I guess, had to eat a bipedry to stay alive, or maybe he just made it up. I think I just went in the wrong direction. I have to find the vocabulator. Did I go up here yet? I think I did. And I don't know if I can get up there. I have to find the voting machine. I think it's this way, through this door. There it is. Okay, let's look at our ballot here. No, no, yes, yes, yes. Oh, wait a minute, those are out of order. No, no, yes, no, yes, yes, no, yes. Probably won't remember that. Let's see if I can do this. Should the maximum ramp angle? No. Uh, be abolished. Cyclical vomit torture? No. Preparation and selling of dangerous squizzle beasts for consumption to be classified misdemeanor? 
Yes, I think so. Shall mm, Poos Cafe be the official color of next year's festival of choice? No. Shall outworld possession of narcotics lead to immediate forced ingestion of all substances? Yes. Shall it be a felony to possess, sell, or export bipedry meat for globbering consumption? Yes. Shall deforestation of the Wagis forest for door herding land be allowed? I think the answer is no. Shall marriages between ring drawlers and plant drawlers be recognized by the state? I think the answer to that one was yes. Here's our gold ally council card. We're done. Let's go back and, uh... <clears throat> let's go talk to that council. We are now a friend of the council. We voted like they did. Game is saved. Let me in to see the council, bub. So you're an ally of the council, huh? Okay, I guess you can wait in the lobby until the emergency session is over. Whatever you do, don't disturb them. Here's the lobby. There's Pal waiting for us. Surely there's been some mistake. No outwater could possibly emulate the wisdom of the council. Well, I'm resourceful. How's that? One more save. Hey, Pal's here. It's about time you guys showed up. Too bad you didn't want me dragging along. I got scared waiting by myself, so I came looking for you guys. Turns out the guard outside is a big old robot lover. He's got half a buddy unit in his garage that he's trying to build. He said I could wait in here if he was too, if I was too scared outside. Where have you been? Can we please stick to the issue at hand? We must reach a decision before the missiles hit. Sitting here and squabbling about it isn't going to save us. What we require is swift, decisive action. Someone must fly into the hive and destroy the threat. I don't think rushing headlong into conflict is the best course of action for the people of Democritus, Hal. Best course of action? Would you rather sit back and die? There are 64 cascading concussion missiles headed straight for us. Unless we do something in the next two hours, this entire planet will be rubble. This is obviously my fault. I take complete responsibility for our destruction. Oh, you're all jumping to conclusions. There's no evidence. The missiles are even destructive in nature. Evidence? The Verulent Hive has been doing this for hundreds of years. Bomb planet, wait for dust to settle, then recolonize to expand hive. What exactly do you think is inside those warheads? Gift baskets? <laughs> That's quite enough. No one doubts your passion for the subject, Councilman, but this is a democracy. All voices will be heard equally, and you've dominated this session long enough. Now, who will be heard next? We will. <coughs> I've heard enough. Give us a fight. We'll take out this hive while you guys bicker about it. Who are these people? Are they serious? Uh, could we talk about this for a second? You want to get off this planet or not? See? Now that's decisiveness. Get this man a fighter. That's a woman, Hal. Aren't we all forgetting something? <laughs> the 228 Sparrow is a state-of-the-art asteroid fighter. It packs everything a talented pilot would need to infiltrate and destroy the hive. Except our hangar security systems are still uh oh, under. have to fight There's some no robots. For a subcommittee to approve the activation. So you'd have to fight past a division of deadly sentry robots just to access the ship. Sir, do I look like I care? Where are the keys? This is insanity. Why fight the hive when we can just steal the fighter and save ourselves? No kidding. Screw the fighter. Let's grab a warship and fly home in style. No. I'm not gonna sit back and watch another planet be destroyed. Rose got some principles, I tell you. Can't let you do this. Your concern <laughs> is sweet, pal. And unfortunate because you're coming with us. 